This is the G1000 Primary Flight Display, or PFD, overview offered by MS Aviation. The PFD can be broken into two major areas. The first area is the display area, and that's this area here. The second area surrounds the display area and consists of buttons, soft keys, and a combination of buttons, switches, and knobs. Switching on the G1000 is easy. Just press the power button. The display unit on the G1000 can further be subdivided. This is the electronic attitude indicator. It displays the aircraft's relationship to the horizon. It gives degrees of pitch up, pitch down, and roll left, roll right, or bank. This being 10, 20, 30 degrees, 45, 60 degrees of bank. Also at the top, there's a slip skid indicator. That's this piece here. During coordinated flight, this extended piece of the triangle is aligned with the triangle. If it slides left or right, the aircraft is uncoordinated. At the bottom of the display is the horizontal situation indicator, or HSI. That's this piece here. This displays the aircraft's current heading, which is 250 degrees. The HSI can also display GPS, localizer, VOR, NDB, or other types of navigation aids on the display. In this case, it's just showing GPS navigation. The HSI also includes a heading bug, shown here, and some markings along the outer ring. This mark, for example, indicates a standard rate turn. We'll see how to use this a little more later. On the left-hand side of the unit, there's an airspeed tape. The airspeed is displayed here, and because we're not moving, it's dashed out saying zero. Also, true airspeed is shown in real time below the airspeed tape. All of the color codings on a traditional airspeed indicator are replicated here on the speed tape. On the right-hand side of the display, there's an airspeed tape. In this window, the current altitude will be shown. At the top is an altitude pre-select, which we can set as a reminder or to command the autopilot. And out at the bottom is the barometric pressure, similar to the Colesman window, which we can set. Over here, we have a vertical speed tape which shows the vertical speed of the aircraft in hundreds or thousands of feet per minute up and down. Near the top right of the primary flight display, we see the communications display. Here we have communications one, communications two. These are two independent communications radios. This is the active frequency, and this is the standby frequency. So this is the active frequency for COM1 and for COM2, and these are the standbys. On the left-hand side of the display, we have navigation radio frequencies, NAV1, NAV2. Again, the active frequencies are the ones closest to the middle of the display, 117.95 in this case. And that's an important point because all of the active frequencies are shown here and here along the inside of the PFD display. In the middle display area, we have GPS data. This tells us we're going to Orlando Airport, it's 931 nautical miles, and the bearing to get there is 126 degrees. We'll see more on using this later. At the bottom, we have a series of soft keys. Notice that above the soft key, there's a corresponding box.
Notice also there's additional details like transponder information and local time above these boxes. What's displayed in this area here is a function of which of these buttons are pressed. Let's have a quick look. If, for example, I press the inset button, an inset map will appear here. Also, notice that the switch names now change to reflect what's here. In this case, I'll just turn that off. If you now press a different button, like maybe PFD, you'll get some other options that appear. For example, if I wanted to change a bearing pointer, like bearing 1, I could press that and I could get the direct to MCO location and I could get some information about that bearing pointer here. We'll discuss these features in more detail in a later lesson. This is just an overview for now. Along the left hand side of the screen we have some knobs and buttons. Here for example we have a volume control. That controls the volume of the navigation radios up here. We also have a toggle button. That allows us to change between this frequency and that frequency. Here we have a knob that allows us to change between navigation 1 radio and navigation 2 radio and change their frequencies. This button, heading, allows us to move that heading bug right there. And the last thing we have is an altitude button. This allows us to set this altitude as a reminder altitude, or if we have a Garmin Autopilot, to set that as the autopilot altitude. Along the right hand side of the display, we have some more knobs and buttons. The first thing we have is a volume control here, which allows us to set the communications radio volume. We also have a toggle button that allows us to change frequencies between active and standby. The next knob set is called course and barrel. The course function allows you to set this arrowhead where you want, and this barrow allows you to set the aircraft's barometric pressure in the Colesman window. There are two data card slots here, which you can see. One is for the GPS database, which is here, and the other is for the Garmin 1000 actual display, which can be updated by the factory or by a representative in this other card. The next button we have, or knob we have, is called the range or pan button, and what that allows us to do is use this kind of like a little mini joystick to control functions on the multifunction display, which we're going to see in a later lesson. The remaining buttons and knobs here are used to control the G1000's GPS. We'll have more on that topic a little bit later, but for now, just to give you a basic idea, if I were to press Direct 2 and set some location here and activate it, I could then display that location and go directly to it. We'll see more on using the MFD and the GPS functions in a later lesson. For now, that concludes the overview of the primary flight display on the G1000. For additional information, stop by our website at http www.pilottraining.com.